Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to be talking about specifically what it means to have your Mercury in Scorpio, or Mercury in the 8th house. So my name is Brandon, I do astrology videos here on YouTube, and I have a playlist down below where I have linked, where I talk about everything um, prior to Scorpio and prior to the 8th house. Um, so I go through every single planet, um, Sun through Saturn, so if you have anything in any of those signs or houses, there's a playlist down below for you. Um, and so this is part of a very large series that I'm working on, as you can probably imagine. And this is the Mercury and Scorpio, Mercury and 8th house video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about specifically a couple of different things. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about what Mercury is within astrology. Secondly, I'm going to be talking about obviously Mercury and Scorpio. And then finally, what Mercury means in the 8th house. So you may have your Mercury and Scorpio, you may not. You may have it in the 8th house, or you may know someone with this placement or with this um, whether it's Mercury and Scorpio or Mercury in the 8th house. And it's really important to just kind of really understand the way that this works. So there also, there's also going to be a conversation about Mercury prior to any of this as well. Um, and so I would really recommend you check those things out. There are timestamps down below, so you can check out specifically when you when I talk about what. Um, so you can kind of just go through that and kind of just click to what you have and kind of learn about that as well. And so, yeah, I'm really, really excited to be doing this, this series here. The Scorpio series has been such a doozy and so much fun in so many different ways um for those that don't know i am a scorpio sun um as well as scorpio mars so i have a lot of you know um scorpionic energy that i love to talk about this is one of my favorite favorite signs for obvious reasons um and i really enjoy speaking about it and i think there's going to be a lot of conversations in this particular one um that is going to have a lot of different things to talk about. So if you have your Mercury in Scorpio or Mercury in the 8th house, obviously stay tuned. And um, also let me know what your thoughts are about this. And you know, this is YouTube. You know how this works. So like, like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things. Like, they help me. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. Um, so feel free to put those down below. Those will always help me out. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, oh, one more thing, one more thing before I do that. Um, in the description box below, if you don't have your chart and you don't have any understanding of what that is, there is a link down there for you to kind of check out where you can generate your chart. If you don't know of what any of this is and what I'm talking about, check that out down there. And then finally, as well, my website, if you're interested in anything with me, contacting me, all that stuff's down there too. So now, without further ado, let's talk about what Mercury means in astrology. Right, so Mercury within astrology. So the way that Mercury kind of functions within a natal chart is it's going to kind of take on the flavors that it is surrounded by. It's going to take on kind of the archetype. It's a very adaptable planet. Um, and so this is why Mercury um, aspects and Mercury placements are really important uh, because Mercury really just is so malleable and changeable. Um, it is able to really kind of become whatever it is that Mercury is put in, whether house sign aspect, and will kind of layer the mindset and layer the perspective to be something that is connected to the sign that Mercury is in. So in this example, um, you know, Mercury is in, we're going to talk about Mercury and Scorpio in specific, but Mercury is going to go into signs relative to Venus. So if we think about Mercury being in a Venus world sign, what do we think about that? Okay, well, we, we have a lot of conversations around peace, lots of conversations around harmony, around artistry, around what we want, around money, right? There's a lot of mindset focus around those things. Versus if you put Mer uh, uh, Mercury in a, in a Jupiter world sign, um, then it's going to be a lot about philosophy and religion and spirituality. Um, and so Mercury is a lot about how we think, how we perceive the world, what our mindset is, where we put our mental focus, and how we understand the world, and also how we communicate things. So everyone's communication style is very different. Everyone has different ways of interacting with the world, understanding the world. One of the things I really think that's really important to understand with Mercury is it's all about e each person's perspective on whatever is being like brought to you, right? Mercury is going to work very differently um, and kind of take in information very differently when it's in a Martian fiery sign like Aries or a, you know, watery kind of really sensitive sign like Cancer. They're going to have very different ways of approaching information and what you say to them. And everyone has a different relationship with words and their energy behind the words are not always the same for every single person. And most times they're not. Um, is that saying that every single person with a Mercury in Aries is going to respond and react the same way to what you're saying? No, not necessarily. 
um, but it means that their mind is keyed into communicating in a way that is Martian or communicating in a way that is Aries-like and is very forthcoming and, and, and you know, forward, right? Now, Mercury also, um, it rules all things related to our nervous system related to our kind of brain or our mind, um, related to our writing style, our speaking style, our comprehension style. It's all about our own internal kind of story. So if we think about Mercury, it rules um, naturally Gemini and Virgo. Um, and so those are the third and the sixth house, which are both house houses relative to things that are um, that are information based. The third house is where we get our information, how we understand our world, how we make sense of our entire story, how we learn is a lot of what Mercury does within the third house. I did a whole Mercury Gemini and Gemini series. Make sure to check that out if you have any third house planet. Um, versus in the sixth house, it's all about the kind of day to day, monotonous, kind of deeper, kind of introspective kind of work where we're trying to really critique ourselves and do the inner kind of guidance and kind of perfect our way of moving forward. So, like I said, Mercury in. Um, in the chart really has this very like mindset focused kind of mental clarity that it's trying to achieve and um it comes through our words comes through our speaking style comes through our perspectives where we look at things how we look at things um and mercury has a lot of different things that it really wants to say and with mercury specifically in scorpio we'll go into this one here in a moment but um, there's a lot of depth that Mercury wants to have in Scorpio. Um, and we'll get to more of a deeper dive on this, but I really want you to know that with your Mercury placement, um, it's really important to understand that your perspective and your mind is very, very important. Um, and this is what we're talking about when we talk about Mercury. We talk about your um, your way of coming across, your way of interpreting your own experience and finding the words to talk about whatever it is you're trying to talk about as it relates to your life. Um, and also ways to understand why you're here or the reason is that we can make sense of the logic behind the steps that we have taken or the steps we want to take. So just understand that that's something that Mercury really works with. It is, like I said, very, very adaptable, very malleable, very um, kind of just able to or wanting to rather adapt. Um, and so there's a lot of importance when it comes to Mercury to keep that open mind and work on the open mind um, and open up your perspectives in a lot of different ways. Mercury is very much about that. It's the messenger. It rules sales. It rules all of those things that are really, really um, just movement and talking and things of that nature. So anyone that does anything relative to door-to-door -door sales, delivery is very mercurial. Um, any, sort of, any sort of transportation is mercurial, as well as any sort of diagnostic or analytical kind of job, whether it's in data analytics, whether it's in accounting, those are all going to be kind of mercurial things. Organizing is one of the things that Mercury loves to do. Um, so just understand that's kind of just a bunch of different keywords about Mercury. Now, Mercury, I kind of hinted at it before, but Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. Um, so it's considered to be fallen or um, not as, um, as, as functional in the signs opposite that. So Mercury... There's, there's some differences in how people view Mercury, um, and a lot of different astrologers will say different things about Mercury, and I want to kind of get that out here first before um, we have people in the comments being like, you know, you said that Mercury is exalt. Okay, so Mercury has a lot of different ways that it chooses to express itself. Um, obviously, it rules Gemini, rules Virgo. Um, and in every scheme in regards to dignity, um, the planets that are, this, I'm sorry, the signs that are opposite the planet that it rules are going to be considered in detriment. So with Mercury ruling Gemini and Virgo, the signs opposite of that, which are Jupiter ruled signs, which are Sagittarius and Pisces, those are going to be detrimented or difficult placements for Mercury to be in. Now, the other thing that other astrologers can say here, and I'll definitely be talking about this when we get to this particular Mercury sign, but there are some astrologers. I am in the camp with this as well. Um, I don't really utilize it fully in readings until it really comes up or if it comes up. Um, but Mercury um, has been said that it is um, considered to be exalted in the sign of Aquarius. Um, and then in that same vein, it's considered to be fallen in the sign of Leo. So there's kind of this modern take of Mercury being really, really well placed in the sign of Aquarius, considering a lot of modern astrologers connect to um, Aquarius as the um, 
Uranian energy and as Uranus as the higher octave of Mercury. So there's conversations we'll be having there. We'll get to that when we get to Mercury and Aquarius. Promise you for that. Um, and it's something that I just want to get into that. Now, in the traditional scheme, um, we have, you know, Mercury ruling Gemini and exalted in Virgo. Therefore, it's considered to be detrimented in, um, in Sagittarius and then fallen in the sign of Pisces. So there is this kind of difference like, with that. And I think um, with Mercury, as more information comes out, Mercury wants to kind of be included. So I think there is something about those sorts of experiences or those sorts of thought processes as well, meaning that there's ways that Mercury can be exalted and considered to be exalted in Aquarius and fallen in um, in Leo. But I don't want to get you too focused in on that. Um, I just want to let you know that there is there is um, other ways that Mercury can be considered dignified, not dignified, those sorts of things. Um, none of which are really brought up in this particular video for Mercury in Scorpio. But for some reason, this is what's being brought up in this video, which is really funny because it's a Mercury Scorpio video, a Mercury 8th house video, which are the ones that like I want all the deep depth dark information. I want all the truth, right? And I'll get to that in a second. But point is, that's all the kind of regular rulerships in that regard. Um, and yeah, I talked a little bit longer on this than I expected because this isn't supposed to be that long. But point is, that's Mercury in astrology. Let's move on to what Mercury does specifically in the sign of Scorpio. So we have Mercury in Scorpio, in the dark, elusive um, depth of Scorpio. And this is where Whew, we see the the mind being forced through, for lack of a better word, hell. It is wanting to go through hell and high water and push through all the darkness, all the difficulty, all of the disastrous sort of abuse that they have gone through um, as it relates to their mind. And, the, and they're running through this kind of like chainsaw in their mind. So a lot of what I see in my mind when I think about Mercury and Scorpio is kind of this this mental prison really um that's what it can feel like um it's it's not in the same way as mercury and pisces um even though pisces rules prisons um mercury and scorpio has much more of a kind of like vice grip on the mind um in a way where there's almost this although this isn't necessarily what this is used for it's almost this kind of like when you see those people that have those those beams to keep their their um their neck straight to keep them aligned and all that stuff, it's giving that energy. Um, but the only difference is it's it's much more like like impactful and hurtful and it's a lot more stress. There's there's some sort of image that's that's coming to mind right now. I can't really quite exactly place it, but my point is is it feels that way. It comes across that way. Mercury in Scorpio is it's one of those placements that really has so much power. And that's something we've been talking about with all these, these Scorpio videos is there's so much power to darkness and to pain and to difficulty and to confusion. And with Mercury being placed in the very intense um, Plutonic and Martian sign of Scorpio, the mind is going to want to go very, very, very deep. Um, in a way that they haven't even wanted to go that far before. And that's something that Mercury really needs to come to terms with, is that they're not for service level conversations. They may want to be. They may, you know, they may think that's the most important thing. They may think that that's the safest thing. But their mind and their, their mental capacity wants to go very deep very heavy, very, very into dark things. And they almost wonder, they almost can navigate and their mind wants to navigate trauma, like trauma, darkness, um, taboo subjects, occult things, astrology, right? Astrology, tarot, any of those things that just feel like they, like they have some sense of power or they have some sense of regaining control to some sort of degree. And a lot of that, it's interesting because this is the first time that I've really mentioned, or at least from what I remember in this series so far, really mentioned the idea of like control. And that's something I think that Mercury, I know Mars does really well in Scorpio with that, but Mercury in Scorpio has a different sense of control. And this is where you can see the mind and, and the kind of the thought process. And this is very similar as well in some sort of vein to Virgo placements but 
um, with Mercury and Scorpio, it has this kind of obsessive mind. Um, and it can have this sort of like very fearful mind of, of things that they're scared of that they don't know why. Or they just, or, or they can be extremely, extremely curious about really, really deep things. And they, they just want to dive. They want to just go completely into everything and be like, what is this? Why is this person here? Um, what are they doing? There's a lot of like distrust of people's words. There's a, dis and, and in turn, there's a distrust of their own kind of thought process. And the thing about trust and distrust, is something that I think we should talk about here with Scorpio in the eighth house the whole concept of trust and not trusting someone, the reason that happens, and this is a very Scorpionic thing and Plutonic thing, the reason that happens is because you are being guided back to yourself to learn how to trust you. Because what ended up happening, the reason you don't trust other people is because you haven't learned to trust yourself deep enough to discern whether you um, should move forward with that person or not. That's where deep trust lies is in yourself and that's the thing a lot of power lies there and a lot of the time with Scorpio placements they will push away everyone else but it's because they have to it's it's because those other people those are like in this example those other opinions those other vo those other voices they're going to be very very combative they're going to be very very intense um and it's about that will keep happening until you become your own echo, echo chamber, essentially, or you become your own kind of, like, put your earmuffs on and kind of only hear yourself, right? Um, until you really learn to listen and unbox and unravel all of what's inside of you um, so that you can really communicate very, very powerfully and very, very, um, you know, tr authentically, really, authentically to who you are. Don't run from the hard conversations as a Mercury Scorpio. Don't don't think that it's something that no one can handle. They can. There are people that can handle the depth that you have. It's going to be a signature in your chart that is going to likely deal with a lot of really intense information. But you want that. Mercury wants that really, really badly. It's like, I want to find the things that are really dark and deep. In that vein, too, Mercury Scorpio, Mercury 8th house... This is just something that happens. You're going to get a lot of secrets. You're going to get a lot of secretive things, especially relative to people's like sexuality, sexual things, people's stuff in their closet, quite literally in their closet. You're going to understand, you're going to know everyone's skeletons. And the thing about Scorpio placements, it's what do you do with that? What do you do with what you know? Do you use it to um, harm people? Do you use it to continue to feel like you are powerful? Do you study it, right? Do you um, try and connect it to, to you? Or do you try and psychoanalyze either yourself or other people through that information? Do you try and deeply investigate it, right? It's really about what you do with those secrets because you're going to get a lot of them and you're also going to naturally find them and want to find them and you're naturally going to rub up against people's psyche in a way that can be combative that can be really really hard for them to sit with and to have a conversation with you and this is something i find really interesting when we talk about mercury and scorpio and also similar to mercury and in, in aries as well um but there's this kind of idea that you you cannot get through to somebody's mind and through somebody's brain and through somebody's kind of just subconscious programming. You can't get through that um, unless they're in a like safe, regulated state. And the th reason I say that is because Mercury and Scorpio, and any Scorpio person for that matter, but Mercury and Scorpio can just kind of intuitively trip and trigger people and upset people and have these things that they say that come across and they just harm people. And when that happens long enough for Mercury and Scorpio, there becomes this internal monologue that you can't talk or you can't say something. And I'm telling you, 
you can, um, but it's about knowing how to do it powerfully and ethically and making sure that your energy, um, your approach, your instinct is um, very pure. And that's why I ask what you do with those secrets, what you do with the information that's given to you, because Mercury in Scorpio is going to say, I want to do, I want to, you know, cause hell with that. I want to do, I want to shut people up like they shut me up so many times ago, right? And it becomes this power dynamic that Mercury does in Scorpio um, until it understands that it doesn't want to create, recreate that trauma, right? And it depends on the severity of Mercury and Scorpio and other aspects to this and how this is all obviously playing out, how this communication is going to be. But they have a lot of information. They know a lot. They have a lot of powerful, th powerful things they need to dive into their own psyche, their own depth, their own trauma, because that is their richness. That is their way out. Their minds and their resiliency in their minds is their gift. And Mercury in a Martian sign is going to naturally cause um, conflict. It's going to want to have conversations of conflict. It could be great at debating, great at debating, great at, de great at creating motivation in others as well. And this is where you'll see a lot of really good psychotherapists with Mercury in Scorpio, Mercury in the third house, I'm sorry, Pluto in the third house, Mercury Pluto aspects. You can see really great therapists that really want to create a, a very deep, deep, deep conversation with somebody. Um, and these are people with Mercury Scorpio that are going to have so much to say and they're going to want to consistently get to deeper and deeper and deeper parts of other people because they understand that by doing that they can bring more parts out in themselves so that's why they need someone to kind of um, debate with to help keep them kind of alive and keep them feeling like they're going towards something and they're fighting towards something and they're and they're motivated and they're and they're having these goals and they're reaching these goals and they're and they're they're psychologically in tune and they're psychologically you know, astute and emotionally intelligent. Um, and so, and, and the thing is, it's because most of the time with Mercury Scorpio at a young age, they were told that they're not, or they were told they know too much, or they see too much, or you shouldn't be talking about that, or you shouldn't know that, or why do you, why do you know that? Why are you saying that? Don't say things that way. There's a lot of those sorts of conversations about Mercury and Scorpio, and it becomes this, like I said, this prison that you put yourself in, um, or that Mercury puts itself in um, to just really understand why it's happening the way it is. And it becomes this very, very introspective sort of placement. And the thing about Scorpio and Mercury, this one actually works um, quite well. But the reason it does work well um, is because it has a natural sextile to Virgo. Um, and so the reason why this works well, it doesn't have any major aspect to to Gemini. Um, it does have a quincunx, but that's not really relevant, um, at least by major aspects, and it's not as, as smooth, really. Um, but with Mercury in Scorpio naturally sextiling Virgo, um, its ruler, right, and considered to be also its exaltation ruler, this is where I think the inner critic becomes a lot stronger. Um, because Mercury and Scorpio can still see and look at Virgo and, and say, hey, like, what do we do? How do we do this? How do we critique ourselves? And this is where the inner critic can get out of control um, with a Mercury Scorpio. Um, but that is their guidance. That is how they do things. And then kind of just to finish this point of the quincunx, I didn't expect myself to bring this up, but because you're a Mercury Scorpio, of course, I'm going to bring up information that I didn't expect to bring up in this very quote-unquote beginner video um but with the quincunx between mercury and scorpio and mercury's other ruler in gemini there is this kind of um sudden sort of um shift this this kind of uncomfortable kind of like i'm trying to figure out how to find that words for myself i'm trying to figure out my perspective so there can be this aha moments with mercury and scorpio relative to the quincunx in gemini where it is almost um having this kind of oh now i get it now i understand how to say it now i understand how deep i can talk now i now i can put my story together right and that's where like like i said the mercury scorpio story it's just it's so 
heavy um and it's so deep and i think it needs it needs to experience it through someone else and allow someone else to say i want to hear all your things i want to hear everything you know i want to i want you to trust me to tell me what's going on i want you to be open with your words because mercury and scorpio mercury pluto pluto third house these are all placements that are so so deeply connected to the power that is information and the power that is their words and their perspective that they want to hold on to that they don't want someone to know those things they don't want someone to know what they know because they've they've had that misused they've had that abused they've had that taken advantage of so they don't want to tell people those things so if you know someone that's mercury scorpio or you yourself have mercury in scorpio give that person grace give that person patience um, because Mercury and Scorpio is one of those placements that is going to want someone to see its depth of knowledge. And it knows it has knowledge. And that's where a lot of self-validation needs to come in for Scorpio placements, right? We have the eighth house connected to this, the second house or Scorpio and Taurus axis. There's a lot of needs for that to be um, really, really self-validated uh, about what you know and and the power of what you know that's but something i think i haven't mentioned once again of course i haven't mentioned in any of these scorpio videos um about the importance of the other side of scorpio which is taurus the opposite sign of it where it's about self-validation self-worth knowing your worth and really saying i know all these things i don't need to flaunt my information i don't need to flaunt my knowledge i don't need to flaunt my power i know my value i know what i offer and it's always evolving. It's always growing. I'm always learning more. I'm always getting more. I'm always gaining more power. And it's about how you utilize those things, right? And I said this in the Mars and Scorpio video, but with Mercury and Scorpio, I also feel like there's this sense of getting more ammunition in some sort of way. And it's a, the mental things. And that's the thing. If you don't, it's hard with Mercury because with Mercury, it wants to understand, well, why did I get this thing? Why did I, why am I getting this information? Why am I getting this, this, this bomb or this, this sort of, you know, um, spear or whatever it may be. Like, why do I have this? How do I get this? How do I get this again? Well, how do I use this, right? There's a lot of that that Mercury actually wants to do. And I think what's most important is not necessarily to get caught up in the analyzing of why you got that information from somebody, but see how that information can actually be used in an empowered way for yourself and whomever you're sharing it with. Um, but I think most importantly, make sure it comes from yourself, right? Make sure you're the one that's self-validating that information, that you're the one that's saying, okay, let me find the positives in this. Let me go through the darkness and see why they may what may have said this thing, why they may have done this thing, why they may have, you know, give me this information, whatever, whatever it is, right? And it's hard with this particular video because Mercury and Scorpio is very intense and I hope you're following along with this and I hope you're not getting lost because I also feel like some Mercury Scorpio is going to be like what is this man talking about this is making no sense but at the end of the day it's something that with Mercury and Scorpio you have to understand that your truth is very powerful your words are very powerful and you're going to get caught up in so many different conversations that are very intense and very very deep in information and i can promise you that you want to find more and you want to get more information you want to be powerful and you have a powerful mind but what's important is for you to be able to sit and figure out what you want to do with that information and that also can be extremely disempowering of what i want to do with all the stuff that i know all this experience that i have all this story that i have what i want to do with it right and I think it's about, once again, making sure that you don't recreate the trauma that was given to you through words to someone else through words, right? You don't want to transfer that trauma. Don't do that. Don't, you know, I'm, I have this image in my head and it's this very clear meme or not meme, but I guess thing that we see on social media sometimes where there's this, these generations of families where there's a generation of a parent yelling at another parent and that parent yelling at their child and that parent yelling at their child, right? And there's this person that just says, no, enough's enough. And they then foster growth and whatever it may be into that next generation. That, that whole that story right there is very Mercury Scorpio where it's like, okay, I'm going to empower this. I'm going to make sure this works. I'm going to make sure this helps people. I'm going to make sure I, it stops with me, right? And that's because you're willing to do the work and dive and go deep into it. So 
that's all I have to say about Mercury and Scorpio. Also, the other thing I meant to bring up that I haven't really brought up yet, um, if you have your Mercury and Scorpio, obviously look to your Mars placement because that's going to give you a lot of context about what you are fighting for with your words and why you want to fight for things. Um, and if any of those Mars videos are out at the time of watching this video, feel free to watch those in the playlist down below. Or if they're coming out later, obviously check those out as those come out because your Mars placement is going to give you some relevancy to kind of help you put together a little bit more information about what it is that you really, really want to um, talk about and why, what motivates you to speak about things. Um, and so I'm not going to go into every single combination of that, but the point is, is to look at the other, the next step in this, which like once again would be if your Mercury's in Scorpio, look to your Mars placement. And then if your Mars is in a different sign, um, you know, like a Venus sign, look to your Venus placement, whatever it may be, right? Kind of understand that that's kind of the methodology and how a lot of astrologers look at things um, to kind of help piece together all the different, the story of the chart in that way. So um, yeah, so that's it for the Mercury Scorpio portion. If you have Mercury Scorpio, please, please, please let me know. Um, how it is down below. Um, I would love to hear from you for so many obvious reasons because you have so much to say. Um, and I would love, 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 love um, your thoughts, your opinions on this, if this validated you, if this felt like it resonated. Because I love doing this and this is what I really enjoy. Um, and so I, I hope this helped you in some way, shape, or form, or anyone for that matter. I mean, if you're interested in anything with me, feel free to check down below for anything like that. But without further ado, we're going to move into what it means to have your Mercury in the eighth house. Okay, so we have Mercury in the eighth house. So the eighth house is a pretty gnarly house. A lot of people that look into the eighth house I get really, really fearful because a lot of things online speak about the difficulty that is the eighth house. And the eighth house can have a lot of fear surrounding it. And if you watch the previous portion with Mercury and Scorpio, it's really important to take away from that. That fear is um, part of what we need to go through um, to really understand our perspective and to understand a lot more about what, what we are scared of and why we are scared of that and where that comes from. And so the thing about the eighth house, I don't want to lighten it so much and talk so positively about it because it is going to be pretty hard. The thing about Mercury here, though, Mercury does... Um, kind of do somewhat well here. It doesn't do like phenomenally, um, but it does somewhat well because um, Mercury is this kind of um, messenger, this kind of, this thing that kind of goes between worlds, right? A lot of the time um, it's Hermes, right? And so it goes between worlds. And if we put it in Hades world, right? It kind of knows how to go between those places and kind of knows how to navigate and it knows how to hop in and hop out, right? And it's, it's not too attached, right? Obviously, it depends on Mercury's sign um, in the 8th house. But um, Mercury in the 8th house will have a little bit more of a just kind of like natural flow to how it goes into, um, into things and out of things as it relates to the 8th house, which is taxes, you know, financial things, people's money, people's darkness, people's depth, depth and debt and baggage, um, financial institutions, getting loans, getting money, getting support, all those things are very Mercury, um, or, or, or very Mercury in the eighth. Um, but Mercury in the eighth has a lot, this is a very, this, okay, this can be a, um, in certain alignments here, this can be kind of scammy. Um, I think this is something that I, I've mentioned a little bit before with Mars, but there can be like a scammer to this. Um, or some sort of like being scammed and then therefore kind of doing that back to somebody. Like, for example, when we talk about people that um, go and scam the phone scammers, right? That's like, that's like pretty Mercury 8th house. Um, and pretty, yeah, it's very, it's pretty Mercury 8th house. And also the phone scammers themselves are Mercury 8th house people. Um, so they kind of have the same sort of archetype, but also scamming the scammers is also something that I think is very Mercury 8th house. Mercury can kind of do either. It can be the, be the voice that is, that is really sly and, and Mercury does rule, um, thieves. Um, Mercury and Mars kind of rules thieves, um, and just Mercury in general can rule like kind of just pick, it rules pickpocketing. So, um, this is quite literally in the 8th house, like pickpocketing people's money. Um, through your information. So like I said, this could be like a very 
very great con man or someone who's a great salesman, um, someone who's really, really good at knowing how to navigate um, someone else's energy, someone else's things. This is where, like I said, Mercury's placement by sign is really important. And also the power that you're doing with this. And something I mentioned with the Mercury Scorpio portion, but it's all about the power that you use this for. Um, eighth house still has that signification there where it is a sense of power and disempowerment. So needing to make sure that you're doing things for the right reasons because eighth house is also everyone else's karma and what you're working out with like a lot of other people. And when we put Mercury here, your mind and what you do and what you say can get you wrapped into things that you didn't realize you were wrapped into, right? The eighth house is a lot of those kind of inner inner workings of you and someone else. And Mercury, like I said, it dips its toe in and out. This could be simply saying a comment, saying a word, saying a thing to someone, shooting a text to somebody, and it becomes this huge thing that you didn't know and they hold a grudge for forever or it, it then gets back to you or whatever it may be, right? That's something that Mercury can be somewhat sloppy with sometimes in that eighth house because it's not really necessarily it's really keen on connecting to people in, in a really deep way but it might not necessarily um communicate it in the most um in the way that cuts that cord as opposed to creates that cord and creates that that mental kind of um need for the other person that's receiving that information to kind of end it cut it you know kick back right whatever it is um and so like i said there is there there can be this this sly kind of energy to this um but it's about what you use your mind for as it relates to other people because like i said with mercury and scorpio these can be amazing therapists be amazing amazing healers amazing psychics amazing you know intuitive people that are so so deeply connected um to spirit and someone else's energy that they can look at you and they can say this 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 it's very diagnostic too um it's very much someone that's like i see this in you this is a problem this is how you solve it bam right or it, it can also be i see this in you and i want this from you i'm going to take this thank you it can be literally either of those and those are very different ways of utilizing your mind um there can be so many different ways that mercury works in the eighth there is a lot of financial advisors here too we can see this a lot of the time um, financial advisors, people that help with big loans and, and kind of contracts and, and alimony and child support and all those things. But there, there can definitely be some like child support or um, legal conversations where you need to understand how to draw the line between yourself and someone else. And Mercury needs to understand how to do that and be able to verbalize those differences. So there is a sense with the eighth house as well about boundaries. Definitely need to have boundaries. Definitely need to understand what is your opinion, what is someone else's, and knowing how to differentiate between those things um, and how to not share your trauma in a way that is um, unhealed, right? And that's hard because I think that's something that kind of speaks to the Mercury Scorpio portion I just had as well, where you don't want to feel so unheard that you just suffer in silence, but find someone that can handle the capacity at which you can communicate because Mercury in the eighth is going to communicate very deeply with a lot of different people. And it's going to want to do that. It's going to want to merge with someone. It's going to want to understand someone else, understand how a bunch of people make their money and understand how to communicate those boundaries. This could be a really, really good um, consultant specifically for like marriage and family therapy. Um, there could be a lot with that or working with a lot of government institutions um, and helping provide funding or find funding. Um, there could be this, there can also be a lot, like I said, there, there is, there's this, this thing that keeps coming up about hackers with this for some reason. I don't know why, but it feels very hacker-esque, um, which is very, um, yeah, very interesting in and of itself. So I think I've beaten the beaten the hacker horse a little bit too long but um but yeah so mercury it's gonna really depend as well on what sign mercury's in in the eighth house here i've done mercury and in a lot of signs here obviously so you're welcome to check those specific videos out in the playlist down below as well because i went through every single mercury sign um honestly sun moon mercury itself venus and mars in this video here so um, the only ones I haven't spoken on are Mercury in Jupiter or Mercury in Saturn signs. But I am going to talk about what Mercury does in those signs, in those, you know, Martian signs, Venusian signs, Mercurial signs, 
in the eighth house first for just a little, little bit, and then we'll do the final um, four of Mercury um, in Sag, Mercury in Pisces, um, Capricorn and Aquarius. So um, Mercury in a Martian old sign, obviously Mercury in Scorpio. Um, this is just going to be a lot stronger. This is going to be a lot more of a, um, a really, really deep sort of, um, like a really deep soul. Um, someone who has a lot, a lot to say, um, even more so. So this is going to even dub double up on, so there is going to be this Mercury Scorpio aspect to it, but it's also going to be this like Mercury eighth house aspect to it, which can be more relative specifically to finances, specifically to loans, specifically to debt. And so this could be like, you're not allowed to like work with someone's debt. And there's almost this like, um, yeah, some very interesting relationships around your finances um, relative to, yeah, well, yeah, there's some just, there's some really interesting conversations there with your finances relative to, um, to how things are accumulated and acclimated. So watch out for like, um, lawsuits with that. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot there, but, um, Scrip in the eighth house has a lot of power. So I think that will be absolutely fine, but there's a lot of, um, fighting for, fighting for, um, clarity in in not just with yourself but also with um whomever you're working with whoever you're connecting to so there is a lot of trust things with this and deep intimate conversations that need to be had and so there's a lot of needing to find the right people to trust with this even more so than just mercury and scorpio alone and especially trusting in a financial sense and who you're lending your money to and bringing your money into with that um mercury and the other martian sign is aries um in the eighth house this is going to have a lot of a um, a lot more feistiness to it. Obviously, it's going to have um, a me 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 energy. Um, it's going to want to really get what it wants out of somebody. Um, this can be the kind of entrepreneurial person, the one that goes and gets a lot of different loans, goes and gets a lot of different um, sort of support from people because it wants to and it takes that risks. Um, this is the one that kind of just wants to run its own business, run its own way. Um, there can be, like I said, this fighting energy to this as well with Mercury and a Martian ruled sign here. Um, and the thing about this one, um, that is interesting with Mercury in this particular, um, alignment, this is actually going to be the chart ruler, um, for this particular chart. Um, I am using whole sign in the way that I am calculating this just for simplicity's sake, but, um, so in, in a lot of astrologers approaches, um, this will be in the eighth house, so it's going to be the chart ruler in the eighth, which has a lot of power, um, has a lot of focus. So, so much of you is literally being pulled into the eighth. So your mind and your opinions are even more powerful with this Mercury in the eighth house, um, in Aries in specific, um, and where you are almost communicating more deeply. You are the one advocating, you are the one pushing things forward in a way that is so much more powerful, um, than if Mercury was not your chart ruler in that eighth house, right? Um, because when your chart ruler itself gets placed in that, in that whatever house it's placed in, it, and emphasizes that, that, um, that house in a lot more ways than it normally would. So I feel like, I always feel like I need to try and, um, put that in there as well, just for those of you that may have Mercury and Aries in the 8th house. Now, um, moving on from this, we have Mercury in, um, Venus rolled sign. So Mercury in Taurus and Libra in the 8th house. This is a much more, um, smoother, um, appropriate kind of conversation. Now in the 8th house, it, it is still going to have a little bit of a difficulty in trusting people. And this is where I think the relational aspect of this, um, is really going to tie into this particular alignment because Mercury in um, a Venus world sign wants to have peace. It wants to have love. It wants to receive something. And it's understanding that the barrier to that is getting through other people. And sometimes think with Mercury in a Venus world sign, this is just Venus in general. It, um, it almost just wants peace so much that it won't ever actually get anything done. And it won't ever push through difficulty or push through darkness or push through harder conversations. And with Mercury in the 8th house, it's going to have to. But Mercury in Taurus and Libra and the Venus world signs are not really going to want to all the time. Unless Mercury's aspect in a way that it really needs to or is forced to by other planets. But Mercury in a Venus world sign is going to really um, want peace, want harmony. Um, and really, want, But also want really deep intimacy and really deep bonding as well. And so... Mercury's going to have to understand how to come to terms with that and and have ways of 
like I was saying earlier, self-validate, but that's mainly because we have Venus in the um in that Martian house and Venus in that in that other sign, right? Um so there is this this kind of importance to um knowing how to communicate gracefully and and understand the other point of view. And this is something that's just true when when we put um you know any anyone that has Venus on the ascendant um you know is gonna kind of have this different sort of way about the way that they move. They're not really going to necessarily um, move in a way that is all about them. And it's about whenever we put Venus and Mars in opposition, um, so like I said, Taurus in that eighth um, in certain ways, and then Libra in that eighth, we're going to have some of these, um, these more balancing acts that are going to happen in regards to intimacy and connecting with people. Venus, uh, Mercury and Mercury and Taurus in that eighth, that is a, um, that can be a gold digger um, in a lot of ways. That can be a financial advisor in a lot of ways, in a lot more ways than normal. Um, that could be someone who is um, really financially astute. Um, yeah, very salesperson, very much sales energy with this one. Um, and over almost even working specifically with diamonds and jewelry um there's something there that's really really interesting like a, like a either a diamond collector that could also most be more so be the moon there in the eighth in like taurus but um it could be someone who is a um like a a diamond or jewelry um fanatic or like someone that works with clocks but that's more like virgo but point is is like there's someone who like is very analytical with what they do and they're very they're very much analyzing beauty and other people's money um, and like I said, this could be like a, this could be like a jeweler or a salesperson or a, um, a, uh, kind of like, um, an accountant, a banker, stuff like that. Um, and you move on from that Mercury and Mercury world signs. Like I said, this is very con artist energy, um, more so Mercury and Gemini than Mercury and Virgo here, but Mercury and Gemini here does have, um, there is once again, contracts, conversations, there is something to do with um, the um, like schooling and and something with with this with the schooling process for Mercury and Gemini in the eighth house where there's um there's this almost uh, like needing to relearn school or needing to reteach yourself through someone else or, or needing to learn either teach like teaching your siblings or learning from your siblings and not learning in the in the same way. Um, and that can be something that feels very difficult and disempowering for you because you never had traditional learning in that regard. Um, it's something that Mercury can generally do in the eighth house, not necessarily in Gemini specifically, but um, there can be this very interesting relationship with how you learned um, and almost feeling like you had to learn through difficult means or through um, hardship or just a lot of like needing to talk your way to the top in some sort of way that can also be seen with Mercury and Capricorn there, but that's a different, that's a whole different one, which we'll get to eventually. But, um, and then Mercury and Virgo, this is a really good one here. Obviously these are both really well placed, so they're not going to be bad. And that's the thing with Mercury, Mercury in the eighth, it's about, um, Mercury and Mercury role signs in particular in the eighth, um, can do a lot. It can do a lot of different things with its mind, with its opinion, with its voice, because Mercury is well placed. So it's going to want to do those things, but Mercury and Gemini, um, in the eighth, it's just going to want to acquire stuff. It's not necessarily going to want to apply it. It's going to want to acquire and get more and understand more and have more conversations and all these different things. Um, and it might not necessarily, um, like I said, know how to apply it, which is why I said Mercury and Gemini is way more pickpocketer, pick, pick, pickpocketer than um, Mercury and Virgo in that eighth because Mercury and Virgo is going to want to find the right, the fine-tuned ways of doing it. So these are, like I said, more of the, um, the more specific financial advisors and the deep, deep analytical, the doctors, the surgeons, these are those ones that are really like, okay, I want to really deeply, deeply connect with you and deeply help you. And, and not saying that Mercury and Gemini can't do that, but just understand that that's part of it as well. Um, that Mercury does well in Virgo in that regard. Now, Mercury in a, the sun and the moon. So, um, Mercury in the sun. Um, this is going to be a cool one because this is where, um, we put, the sun that illuminates these things. So this is where we'll see someone that is illuminating a lot of financial things for other people. Um, you'll see, once again, more financial advisors, but specifically like child-related things, child care, 
um, you know, working for DCFS, working for more difficult um, conversations around children, um, working for alimony, working for child custody battles, um, having conversations around those things, having ways to work with that. Um, also working on a lot of creative pursuits and making those really, really powerful. Like I said, I'm not trying to go too deeply into these because I'm already been yapping and yapping and yapping here. Um, but something that I think is just important is just to know that Mercury and um, the sun sign is going to illuminate a lot more quickly on those things. So it's about what you illuminate with that as well, with the sun in the eighth there, with all the Leo placements in the eighth. It's just something that is really important to understand. Um, Mercury in the moon sign, this is a lot more sensitive. Um, this is the collector. This is a lot more the collector. Um, hoarding can be definitely seen here. Whatever the family's, whatever the mother and the family's instinct is and, and however you meet your needs um, as Mercury and Scorpio is in the eighth house is going to be really, really important um, to understand and unravel and work with and, and how your family manage their finances, what finances your family left you um, are really, really important and what kind of psychological... Um, coping mechanisms they left you and how they've taught you to understand the world and speak and all those things is really um, crucial for a Mercury and Cancer there. Now, moving on um, to Mercury and Jupiter world signs here. So this is where Mercury does not do that well because Mercury's trying to find meaning in faith. Now, I find that Mercury in a Jupiter world sign, specifically in this example here with Mercury in um, the eighth house, can do quite well because the eighth house is really wanting to find some sense of meaning and purpose um in all that darkness it's moving it's moving from the eighth to the ninth that um it really can struggle with so what's interesting is when you put sagittarius more specifically in that eighth house there is this kind of like natural philosopher natural positivity with mercury and sag which we'll get to that once we talk about mercury and sag next season but there is this aspect of some optimism that's being brought to that similar to kind of all the fire signs in that eighth house with Mercury. It's like your mind brings some sort of optimism or flair or positivity to what you're talking about as it relates to intimate things, difficult things, darker things, things people don't want to talk about, don't want to look at, don't want to write about, sign about, um, you know, um, commit to or have contracts about because they're heavy and they're dark and they're difficult and they're not easy, right? Um, so just know that that's something that Mercury can do in Sag. Similarly, in, in fire signs, I think there is something here both in Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, more specifically in Leo um, and Sag, there's this kind of like specifically sex therapist that I can see with Mercury and Leo in that eighth house um, or Mercury and Scorpio in the fifth. Like there's kind of a connection. with when we, Whenever you connect the fifth and the eighth or the ninth and the eighth, um, there's some sense of um, money being made from speaking about or talking about um sexual pleasures or gambling as well there can be a gambling aspect with this and back to the mercury leo really quick um there is definitely some gambling conversations here um yeah definitely some gambling stuff that that's more so mercury and scorpio in the fifth but still like those can still kind of be inverted and have um similar correlations that are kind of connected to those things so just know that as well um mercury and pisces in the eighth, this is a, um, I don't know what happened to my money and now it's all gone type of thing. I don't know where this went from. I don't know. But also, I don't know how I got this loan. I don't know how I got this money. I don't know how I had these things. I just had faith and it happened. Um, these are the ones that live on a dream and that belief allows them to make a lot of money. Um, that's something that with Mercury and Jupiter, it, it, although it's not considered to be good for Mercury, it allows for the optimism to be potentially so strong or the idealism or the vision to be so strong that that is what keeps them going and keeps them alive and keeps them um, moving forward. And I think with that eighth house there, it has a lot of like really um, both Mercury Jupiters, they, they have a very um, meaning focused way about going towards intimacy. So they're, they're really going to look for meaning in other people a lot quicker. And I think that's why, why I think these do a little bit well, like better here because they're trying to find the meaning they're trying to find those things granted they might not see the truth all the time because they're idealizing or they're you know always seeing the positives so they might not see the actual reality and that's where we see mercury not doing well in these signs but um learning how to trust people and learning the meaning behind trusting people and, and pushing that that kind of uh um that ball forward and connecting with someone is really important with that and then finally mercury and capricorn um 
and Mercury in Aquarius. So think about Mercury in Capricorn. I'm going to say this before I say anything else. Um, Mercury in Capricorn is the chart ruler in this particular example because um, you have a Gemini rising in this example. So if you have your Mercury in Capricorn in the eighth house, know that there is a lot that you are being pushed towards to understand, to talk about, to have conversations with, to deeply, 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 deeply connect to people and yourself, um, especially because you are Gemini rising. You are the mercurial person. So you're connecting to you and other people. So there is this overabundance of responsibility with the words that you do. This is where you more than likely, considering it's Mercury and Capricorn and it's Gemini rising in this example, um, you are um like this is going to be someone who who does a career in, in eighth house things um who puts themselves and advocates towards eighth house things right obviously it's it can do a whole different range of stuff like i said therapy financial advising working with other people working with their money their intimacy um their loans their you know different things their psychology their um their bodies their their value their morals their ethics um all these different things. There's so many different things that the second house, the eighth house rather can do with Mercury there. And, and there's so many different businesses that can be connected to that. Government stuff is really, really strong with this one. Working in government, just kind of being brought into that. It's a very Saturn um, Capricorn thing, which oh, we'll get to that when we get to Capricorn season because that's going to be a really fun one for sure. Um, and then Mercury and Aquarius. This is just going to be the rebels, the different ones, the ones that are not really that normal, that unique. Um, well, I'm sorry, not... I shouldn't say about them. The ones that are are not normal and are unique, um, and they are truly looking for different ways to advocate for life from people. So these are the group advocates. These are the nonprofits. These are the 501c3s, um, the ones that are really able to create different um, belief systems. Similar in the way with Mercury and Sag, Mercury and Pisces, more so Mercury and Sag, there can be some church financing aspect to this as well, or faith-based financing aspect um, in that regard as well, um, or tax um kind of differences or tax kind of benefits um with all three of those actually mercury and aquarius sag and pisces can kind of all have those and capricorn to some degree as well um of some sort of but capricorn is a different different way of getting to uh uh getting different sorts of like i guess bailouts you know government bailouts is very mercury capricorn um in the eighth very much that um and i think it's yeah, just very, it's very, very much that. Um, Mercury in the 8th is a lot of bailouts, and I th think, I'm don't quote me on this, but I think I might be right on this, um, that, interestingly enough, this is so random, and this is so 8th house, and this is going to stay in because this is really important, um, but I have a feeling that um, this might be... Um, hold on a second. This might be, yeah. So yeah. So as it relates to the U.S., um, the U.S. actually has in their 1776 chart, they actually have Mercury in the eighth house um, in Cancer. Um, so it is this energy of bailouts like getting bailouts, getting getting stuff taken from, from the government. It's interesting because it's cancer, so it's itself doing it. It's its family, it's its heritage, it's all that stuff that it's kind of built. So just funny, funny, very funny, but just really random. And that's kind of how, that's just how Mercury works. Mercury brings up stuff like that that is very um, niche. And I didn't really immediately think about that until I'm talking about Mercury specifically in the eighth house. Um, and so, like I said, we do have that in the actual America's chart, and it is also opposite Pluto. So it's kind of relevant here um, in a lot of ways, and that is something that is seen there. So anyway, that's just a whole very random mercurial tangent. So thank you for that in the very end there. Um, but yeah, that's that's a lot of what I want to say with Mercury in the 8th is just about understanding the power you have in um depth perception and not like literal like depth perception like with your eyes yes it's a thing but more about perceiving the depth and darkness in yourself and other people connecting to them um connecting to deep financial values your your deep values um and understanding and seeing how deep you can connect with other people and see what their values are and how they got there and how they um, understood that and understand that your mind is so important um and what you do with your mind what you do with your words what you do with your opinion what you do with the information that you've gotten is so important and so crucial and it can definitely help you in a lot of different ways so just um 
yeah, if you have your Mercury in the 8th house, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you had Mercury in any of those that I kind of really mini blurbed about here, um, although I didn't want it to go too long, but of course, Mercury wants to just yap and yap and yap for days. So that's why I'm just talking it all up here. But um, yeah, if you have your Mercury in the 8th house or in Scorpio, um, and you watched all the way to this, thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what your thoughts were on it. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things. It's going to help me out because this is what I do. I love doing this. And if this helped any of you, um, Mercury is, um, is one of those ones that obviously likes to talk. Um, and I'm very grateful to be able to just do this. I love being able to do this. I love being able to help people. Um, and if you're interested in anything with me, um, all my stuff is down below. And of course, this series is still ongoing. There's a lot more videos to come. So that playlist is down below if you have anything after um, Scorpio in the 8th house. And of course, if you have anything prior to Scorpio in the 8th house, there's th those videos are already made as well. So feel free, feel free to check those out. Um, so thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for sitting through this with me. I appreciate you for listening to Mercury in the 8th house. Yep, on all the different deep, dark secrets that Mercury does have in this area of the chart. Um, and remember that you have power here. Remember that you have worth here. Remember that you have value here. Um, I very much appreciate you um, for being here. And I hope to see you later. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys soon.